Hello everybody, Mr. Pilgrim here coming at you with the fourth video in our Platinum Trophy Guide for Ender Lily's Quietus of the Knights. Quietus, Quietus, I'm pretty sure I've butchered it so many times now. But anyways, in the last video we had gone through and defeated Knight Captain Julius and Honir, Keeper of the Abyss, and also unlocked Ending A. So now from here, if you actually come back to the Dark Depths, I believe is the exact term for this safe area. Want to make sure that you have Guardian Silva equipped. You're basically just going to come all the way down here. And we're going to follow this path right here. To come on through and head down to the next area. And also grab an item to be able to be in that area. So in here you're going to have this weird little like maze that you'll have to do. Ow. It's not too hard, but it bits of it can be a bit annoying, like here. So, with Silva, um, you can actually destroy these spikes to give yourself a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of uh, some breathing room. As you can see, though, it's not too terrible, but this... This will save you from some a couple of mistakes. As you can see, make your life just a little bit easier. Probably the best form is the jumping version. So if you can do that, then that's even better. But me being the trying to be on the safe side, I always just think it's best to take out all the enemies in the way. As you'll see, this area can be a bit tricky. Especially this part right here. There we go. And now you'll fall down here and enter the Verboten Domain. Now in this chest right here is the item that you need, the Heretic's Mask. This will reduce poison and um, damage you take from the water in this area. So right here you'll just want to come and equip it. If you have any room, of course, it is only worth one relic slot. Now, before continuing in this area, I highly recommend actually going back and exploring a majority of the first area over here. So the starting area and then as well the first little village and just make sure all of the rooms are more or less yellow because then they'll be fully completed. You'll have gotten all the items and things like that, things of that nature. Um, in doing so, you'll also find more relics, um, you'll also find um, HP upgrades and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend doing that before tackling this area, as this area can be pretty tough and you'll need all the help you can get to reduce damage, increase your health and stuff like that. Um, so I will probably go ahead and just skip me doing that. I will include any mini bosses or spirits that I do fight, so that will be included and I will show you where those are on the map but for now go ahead and do that and then we'll come back to this area starting from this specific checkpoint save point right here so yeah
Alright, so now we're finally going to be going through this area as it is pretty simple but also a little confusing what you're supposed to do at first. So in this area what you're supposed to do is basically go through and activate two levers to be able to ride the elevator all the way down to the bottom. And to do that you have to first gain access to both sides and then you'll activate two switches. Well then that will allow you to finally go and... Um, uh, unlock the air elevator path. So here we will have the area leading to the first switch. While we're here, we might as well come up here and grab a amulet fragment, and then just take this all the way down. And here you will have your first elevator switch. It's best just to um, die right here and head all the way back to the save point. Alright, so from here we're basically just going to be unlocking the next save point as that'll be a lot easier for us to progress through. So basically all you're going to do is come up here and you're basically just going to be coming over here to the right. Skipping almost everything that you can. If you want good XP, the enemies here can give you that. They are a little tough though, so do be careful of that. Gonna come over here. Almost forgot where I was going. This this area is a little tricky at times. There we go. As you can see, this area is big. But we're almost there. Once you make it to this elevator, that will be the next save point, as we're now technically at the start of the area that you're supposed to come through. Alright, so from this room, we're now going to be heading down to the left path and unlocking the second elevator switch. Um, I'm going to try and push through it as fast as I can. If there are certain rooms that are a little bit more annoying to navigate, I will obviously um, show those. I'm trying to just run through this as much as possible here. Just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. So when you get right here, you just want to jump and come right over here. Alright, so this room is probably going to be a tough one for most people. There is a lot of navigation into it. As you can see, I'm even already getting turned around. But, like I said, you can basically run through most enemies here. There we go. Alright, and once again, like always, in most of these rooms here. We're going to come right here and make a safety save just to be on the safe side. In case something like that happens. Alright, now in this room here, it can be a little bit confusing. But you'll just want to make that grab right there. It's, like I said, it can be a bit confusing. As I remember, I was trying to figure out this path. And it was just, it was getting the best of me. 
So you'll basically just follow this along. Come over here. You'll have these three enemies right here, and you'll have the other switch. So, like always, we're now going to reset and go back to the top so we can now ride the elevator down. Alright, now we can finally take our elevator ride down and be on our way through the final area. So you'll come off here over to the left, almost similar to the same path that we had just taken. Except we don't take this path down here. We come over this way. There you go. Once you have made it here, you will have the elevator. You'll take the first one down. You'll be able to come over here, take this one down. And then finally, you will be able to take this last one down all the way. And you'll be here in probably second to last save area that you'll find. Alright, so now we have our next boss, Muriel the Beloved. Now, for this boss fight, like always, I'm going to try and detail how I do the boss fight and what to do for each thing. So basically, you're just going to be switching between using just everything and just maintaining um, certain abilities at the time. And then when you can use your ultimate, uh, make sure that you're using Julius as it just it can do a little bit more better. But if you feel like you need a little bit more um, protections while using your ult, then you can always use Guardian Silva. Um, if you can upgrade any of your uh, spirits, um, just to make it a little bit easier. But basically, the build I've just been running this whole time is still going to do just fine for this fight and the next fight after. So now I'm going to show you me beating Muriel the Beloved. Now, on a small side note before the boss, if you're having trouble and taking a little bit too much damage, you can come to the Twin Spires here where you fought Mad Knight Old and come all the way to this bottom area here. And here you will have a breakable wall. And then if you come down here, you will find the Snowdrop Bracelet. This will reduce damage um, taken way more than the music box. So equipping that will probably be really good. Um, it does take four slots though, so do be careful of that, but I think it does make up for it for it being worth four slots.
Alright, and once you have finally defeated Muriel the Beloved, you will then want to just come over here into this left room. And over here you will find the next person to purify. In doing so, you will get two trophies. I'm going to skip the cutscene so you can watch it at home. You will get Faden, Faden, and then you will now be able to open up those doors that you haven't been able to unlock as such. And you will get the Separation Trophy and the Truth Trophy. Both being kind of given at the same time because now you only have one boss left in the game and I'm going to show you how to get there now along the way you'll want to pick up um, any of the notes that you'll get as well Alright, so from here you're going to have a very specific path that you're going to want to um, follow. Do be careful though, these enemies hurt. They deal a lot of damage. But you'll have to just follow down this really big room. Just follow the main path. There's only one way to really go. With like a couple of things here and there that you can like find. But once you finally fall all the way down here into the actual abyss, you'll pick up this note here. And I believe there's one more right here. But there's going to be a couple of specific notes that you'll find. And those will also get you a trophy. I'm going to probably look into the detail about there's it's number I think it's 24 through 28 or 44 through 48 um, I'm going to look into that now to find where exactly all of them are so I'll come back to you and show you where they are if I had missed any all right well in regards to Fretia's will trophy um, it's just about collecting all of the or specifically 24 through 28 of the lore findings that you can find right here. Um, there's quite a bit of them, but you'll just happen to stumble upon these when just um, playing through and fully exploring everything, clearing every room. Um, you don't need to get all of these, I believe, but you will need to at least get those. So in doing so, you will then unlock the, um, the, the trophy, Freddy's Will. But for now, we're basically just going to focus on in getting ending B, which will be just to the right of us. Now, like always, I do recommend making a manual save to come back to. But for here, we're just going to fight the final boss of the game. Um, ending C will be focused on in the next video, which will be basically just clean up and everything else of that you have to do in the game. So for now, basically just going to fight the final boss. You will have to fight the final boss again for, for ending C. I don't know why I said that's so weird. But you'll have to do a couple things beforehand. But for the sake, your map should almost basically look similar to mine. There is a couple of things I did specifically not try and get right now as that will go into ending C. So yeah. So for now, it should look similar to mine or at least be 
close to. But uh, now boss strategy, this boss is actually fairly easy with the setup that we have going on. And um, I'm more or less just going to show you uh, how easy, uh, for it being a final boss, it's not too tough. But anyways, I'll see you once I've beaten the boss. All right, and once you have beaten the boss, you will get the Journey's End trophy, but that is not all, as that is only ending B. We still have one more to unlock, but that is going to do it for this episode, and I will see you all in the next one.